Welcome back. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. What is your own reaction to the position taken by the House on that Southeast Development Bill? You can contribute to the debate on our Twitter or Facebook page. Or why not send in a mail? Yes. Do any of that, and you can do that through any of the addresses on the screen. I look forward to hearing from you. Next is a quick look at other decisions the lawmakers were able to reach this week. A legislation seeking to amend the National Minimum Wage Act and provide for periodic review of the Minimum Wage Act every five years has passed second reading in the House of Representatives. According to Representative Femi Bajabia Mila, who sponsored the amendment, there is no law in the country compelling government to review the salaries of workers, a situation this legislation will address. The proposed amendment also seeks to make clear that the review will mean either maintaining the status quo or an upward review of the national minimum wage. Mr. Speaker, as of today, there is no law that compels or mandates the government to review salaries, none whatsoever. The review of salaries at the whims and caprices of government. Mr. Speaker, several countries all over the world, India, Chile, UK, Canada, they all have embedded in their laws periodic review of the salaries and wages of their workers. For some, it's five years. For several countries, it's even on a yearly basis. But let me very quickly say that what we're saying here, we're not saying that the minute five years comes up, you must automatically increase. No. But at least let the law compel the government and laborers and all stakeholders to sit down and review the salaries of workers. Now, you can, after reviewing, maintain status quo or increase, depending on the situation and the economic situation in the country. In another motion, the House also resolved to urge the Chief of Defense Staff and the Chief of Army Staff to urgently provide tents for combatant soldiers at the various theaters of operations. Representative Hassan Saleh, who sponsored the motion, said there is need to boost the morale of the fighting soldiers. The House is aware that the government has committed much resources into waging the war against insurgents which is taking a toll on human and material resources in the light of reported conditions in which combat soldiers or combatant soldiers are sheltered while in combat operations. The House is concerned that many of these soldiers are not provided with conducive tents to enable them rest and recuperate when they retreat and are therefore compelled to provide in makeshift shelters for themselves under trees and, uh, uh, and, and, and the thatched roofs. The House is convinced that there is a need to boost the morale, of, or the morale of the fighting soldiers by providing them with conducive tents for shelter to enable them to complete the war against the Boko Haram insurgents. The House has called for transparency in the investigation into the illegal importation of firearms into the country. After debating a motion on the matter, the House wants President Muhammad Buhari to direct all security chiefs involved in the matter to ensure a thorough investigation is carried out and that those indicted are prosecuted. The House recalls that on 22nd January 2017, operators of the Nigerian Customs Service intercepted a trailer along my two Apapa Road, Lagos, conveying a container of 661 illegally imported pump action rifles. rifles. On 23rd May 2017, another container filled with about 440 pump action rifles, rifles was intercepted at the Tinkan Island Apapa, Lagos, allegedly imported from Turkey. Cognizant, the House is cognizant that the frequent illicit import, importation of firearms into the country contributes in fueling the different shades of crimes. 
such as armed robbery, kidnapping, courtism, herdsman invasion, cattle rustling, militancy, political violence, communal clashes, etc., that are ravaging the nation. The House is concerned that the apparent lack of transparency in the handling of the earlier incident of importation of 661 rifles may have emboldened the perpetrators of the recent 440 pump action rifles into believing that they, they too can get away with the crime. The Federal Capital Territory may soon get a University of Science and Technology and a College of Agriculture. The two institutions are expected to take off during the next academic session, which commences later this year. This follows the work of the House of Representatives Committee on FCT, chaired by Representative Heman Hembe, which convened a public hearing on the bills for the establishment of the two institutions. Present at the public hearing were representatives of FCT administration and the National Universities Commission. The establishment of the Federal Capital, Ter Federal Capital Territory University of Science and Technology, Abaji. Carried? Yes. Carried. Carried. Carried? Yes. Representative Hembe said the committee would ensure it worked with its Senate counterpart for the two chambers to pass the two bills and forward them to President Muhammad Buhari for his assent before the next academic session. Processes, the House of Representatives uh, Committee on Special Duties also conducted a public hearing on a more. bill proposing to repeal the Infrastructure Concession Regulatory Commission Establishment Act and enact the Public-Private Partnership Regulatory Commission. The Director General of the Infrastructure Concession Regulatory Commission was at the hearing and spoke in support of the bill. Now, since 2008, when the Commission began operations, we realized that uh, there were gaps uh, in the Act. And that is why the ICIC Governing Board then began the process of trying to see how the bill can be amended. Now, we're happy now that this has transformed into a process where the Act will be repealed appropriately and a new law established that will strengthen and provide the Commission with more robust powers to implement its uh, 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 mandate. Now, for this new bill, sir, let me just highlight the, the key areas that are introduced in this bill. The first, as you have seen, is the name. Infrastructure Concession Regulatory Commission appears to be limiting the, the mandate of the commission to one form of PPP, which is concession. So by removing that, we will have the full spectrum of the PPP domain to, to regulate. It has caused problems before with MDAs when they adopt a PPP model and we try to ask them to comply with the law, and they'll come out and say, no, we are doing PPP, and your law is uh, regulating concessions. Despite the fact that if you look at section one of the act, it says that they can enter into private area and grant contracts by any other name called. So based on that clause, any other PPP model can properly be captured. But to make it clear, it's important that the name concession uh, disappears and we just have a PPP regulatory commission. That is just some of all that occurred in the National Assembly this week. Decisions your representatives are taking on your behalf. And in the week ahead, we will be here to bring you more of those decisions here on the government. Well, thanks for staying with me. I am Lanry Lassesi and wherever you are, Keep the flag flying. Take care.